Today, we're going to look at Opinium through the eyes of Lisa Shirley, a content and learning administrator. Prior to using Opinium, Lisa was not a Salesforce user, but had some LMS experience. She designs e-learning content. She uses Opinium to manage both synchronous and asynchronous content, like webinars and courses, and also provides video in an on-demand or YouTube-like experience. She configures achievements and certifications. She is able to assign learning to users and track completion of learning. She likes that it is easy to administer learning content, including all content types, and has granular control of who sees what. She also tracks how users are progressing, meeting required compliance completions, and usage rates. Lisa is primarily interested in this portion of the Opinium solution, including onboarding, certifications, and on-demand learning. She also might be interested in video coaching and recommended content, content made available to users in the flow of their work. Her learners include partners, internal employees, and customers. In this demo, she will create new learning content organize it into a structured learning plan, assign it to users, and then track progress. So now let's take a peek at her experience. This is the experience that Lisa Shirley will see when she logs into the Opinium Administrative Console. Everything she needs is available in one place, from creating content to organizing content to tracking content. To create, she'll simply go to Manage Media, and this is where she'll be able to upload content, whether it be e-learning or SCORM or video or PowerPoint. She can upload files directly from here. If they're already on the web, you can access them from here. Or if she wants to create video content, she can actually create video content right from here. Once she uploads or creates, she'll be able to tag that content. So she'll be able to tag it with keywords and metadata so that it'll be pushed as recommended content elsewhere through Salesforce. So as for a salesperson inside of an opportunity or for a customer inside of a case, that content based on how Lisa tags it will now be available to those people real time. Once she creates that content, she can start creating her learning objects. You'll see we support a handful of types. So the media again is that e-learning or video or PowerPoint, really anything you would upload into the system. Quiz is a set of questions and answers, can either be scored or unscored. A resource is some other piece of content that lives elsewhere on the web, so you can reference that from here. Rich text you can build right within the system, and a task is something that the user needs to complete to be approved by somebody else. So for now, we'll create a quiz, and maybe this is Certification 101. So here's all the metadata of the quiz, the description, the branding, the images, the thumbnails, all of those things are available here. And then you can start building the structure of the quiz. So the questions and answers. So here you'll specify the passing score, whether users will get the feedback right away uh, on the question level, as well as on the quiz level, whether they can see the progress. If it's survey mode, they're not passing or failing, they're just completing it. You'll be able to pull in questions from a question bank. So a lot of settings here in terms of how the quiz is pushed out, as well as how it's scored for the end users, how many times they can take it, things like that. And then you can start building the actual questions. You can import from the question bank or you can manually input the questions. And then you'll see the types of questions we support. We have true, false, multiple choice, single choice. They have to enter a number, they have to enter text, they have to fill in the blank, or they have to build the matching where they select one answer to match with the other answer. So just for simplicity, we'll create one true, false question. You can specify the correct answer. Again, you can have branding with it, you can have images, you can provide real-time feedback, and this can be either just static text, it can be uh, rich text with images, it can actually link to other content. So if you have other learning or other media, or again, something else on the web that might provide more details 
of why they answered this question right or wrong. You can provide that all within the feedback and then you can move on to the next question. Again, this is uh, you probably create a lot more questions with the quiz, but very simple to create those questions and answers and then you can publish that quiz. Similar for any other type of learning object, you specify the metadata, uh, the, how the content is going to be found. Uh, for rich text, you would build out the rich text, for example, and then you can start publishing it, start assigning it, start adding it to other learnings. Uh, so very similar for the other types of learning as well. Another feature that goes hand in hand with the learning objects is video coaching, which is a task that the user needs to complete to be reviewed and or approved by other users in the system. So you'll notice there's a ton of settings here. There's what type of file, the video length, uh, the feedback type and visibility, whether video feedback is required or allowed. You can tag it with concepts to let users start building points towards those concepts. So there's a ton of settings here. And then you'll at, start to add the criteria of the task. The criteria is what the user will actually be graded against. So this is the rubric of what the user will be scored against. And this can be stars or yes, no, or free text or a sliding scale. So you can start to add those existing criteria or you can create a new one. And then you can specify the reviewers for the task. So maybe you want the peers to review and then the manager to approve. This could also be a named user, so maybe the VP of sales is the ultimate approver. You can specify the order in which this happens. And so what we're saying here is first, the user's peers will get to review them, and then the manager will get to approve, return, or reject the submission. So now that you've created the task, you can push that out to go along with the learning. So you're not just pushing the learning, you're also testing the users on their knowledge, on their skills, on their day-to-day, -day, you can start to assess them against different criteria, all right alongside with that learning. The last type of learning we'll look at is the ILT, which is instructor-led training, either virtual or in-person. And this is anything with a date, time, location, even if the location is virtual, you can build that all here. So here's the event, which is really the concept of what's being taught. The classes are the individual date and times that the user can register for. So you can see this one was March 25th. It's already completed. You could create a new class. You can manage the roster for that class. You can manage the instructor for that class. You can upload materials to go along with the event. So there's a lot of things you can do here, but this is really anything with a date, a time, and a location. Now that you've created all of your content, you can start to organize and group that content. So the first thing you would do so is inside of what we call a learning plan. And if you look at a learning plan, same thing as everything else, there's a lot of settings here, a lot of branding, a lot of configuration in terms of what the user needs to do to complete the learning plan. You can specify if they need to take it in order, if they can jump around, uh, if they only need to complete a certain amount of it, so there's a lot of settings here. And the structure of the learning plan is where you start to build out that content. So here you can add your learning objects and your quizzes and your tasks and everything else so that the user has that structured set of content that they need to take maybe in a specific order, but now they know what they need to do and they have a clear guide of what they're doing in what order. So that's the first organizational thing. Then you can start to get even deeper with things like prerequisites. So maybe the user needs to complete something else before they do this. You can start to group it into catalogs for users to be able to browse for content. You can specify the next best learning where users, after they take this, maybe they want to take the next item in the sequence. You can actually recommend that next piece of content. You can add an achievement to it. So this could be a really complex achievement where they need to take five things uh, by December 31st, and then next year they need to do it again. So you can have really structured achievements and certifications with the corresponding badges that come along with it. Uh, so you can start to build out those achievements with the learning inside of it. You can specify equivalencies. So maybe you have this in multiple languages, or maybe you have an online version versus an in-person version. 
so you can start to build out those equivalencies. So all of those things you would do either on the learning object or the learning plan, but just to make sure that, again, users know exactly what they're doing, they know what they're supposed to do, they know what they have access to do, and you can start to build all those things. Then the last thing we talk about is the assigning. There's really three ways for users to receive content. The first is not assigning, but you would add sharing rules to the learning. This allows users who are browsing for content to be able to find the content. So in this example, all the external users and all the internal users have access to this content. You can get really granular though. You could say all the people in this office with this job title have access to this learning or all the customers in North America have access to this learning. So you can get very specific with the sharing rules. The second way for a user to get content is to manually assign it to them. So the learning admin can come in, search for the users that they're looking for, whether it be by name or by title or by group. So you can have all these filters. You can specify the users that you want to have to take this learning. You can give it an optional due date and you can assign the content. You could also upload this from a report if you have a lot of people that you want to push the content to, but this is the manual assigning of content. And the third way is to auto assign content. So this is very similar to sharing rules, except what happens here is when this user comes into the system, they will automatically be pushed this learning. So that manual step isn't required anymore. Anybody who matches the criteria that's specified here and again, this can be very granular. Anybody who, who matches that criteria will be automatically assigned that learning. So again, the three ways to push content to users, either make it available with sharing rules, manually assign it, or set up the auto assign rules. So we've talked about the create, the organize, and the assign. The last thing that Lisa Shirley cares about is the tracking. So dashboards in Salesforce are extremely powerful. So these are just a set of what's configured for Lisa. These could be very different based on what your business requirements are. But here she can see who's created, who's completed learning plans each quarter. Uh, even more detail of which learning plans are getting completed. How many classes are being taught? The achievements that are being acquired. So there's a lot of dashboards here. But again, this is very specific to each company. So the key is that in one page, in one place, Lisa has all the data she's interested in. Who's taking learning, who's teaching learning, who's falling behind on learning. All of that information is right here at her fingertips. So I hope you enjoyed getting to know Lisa Shirley and her day-to-day -day activities in Opinium. If you're interested in the other personas, the salesperson, the employee, the customer, uh, I urge you to watch those videos as well. Thank you very much.